Welcome, everybody. It's No Driving Gloves again. Uh, we've got a pretty diverse group again. Uh, like I said, we're taking advantage of everybody's downtime. Don't know exactly when we'll air. Uh, so hopefully everything's over by the time most of these podcasts get out. But um, we've got another interview for you tonight, and it's one that we've been uh, working on getting or wanting to get for quite some time. Um, the one that's kind of near, I guess I want to say near and dear just because it's a that's the way the saying goes. To Will and I, we spent a lot of time out at McPherson. That's where Will and I met each other, etc. It's what got me on my career path and got Will to uh, where he is. Uh, we have it, it's Amanda Gutierrez, right? Right. Uh, sometimes, sometimes I'm horrible with names. Uh, <laughs> Vice President of is it development at McPherson or why don't Vice you? Vice President of Automotive Restoration. Oh, they, they narrowed it down. Uh, I, for some reason, I'm thinking back to uh, Bob Kneckel and he he was sort of a development and I worked a lot with him when I was out there. Bob but, was my first boss at McPherson College. I would say I'm sorry, but Bob seems to be a nice guy and probably a pretty decent boss. <laughs> so, Fantastic. Yes, definitely. Uh, and went on to do some great things. And one of his projects, I think, is now known as, is it the RPM Foundation? I can't remember if that's where the collector That's right. He yep. started that as Collector's Foundation. That's what he I... He left McPherson College. So, like I said, Will and I were at McPherson, started there 22 years ago. Um, I guess for Will, that's over half his life ago and... For me, that's barely half my life. And Amanda's kind of, I want to say, running the show, is in charge of a lot of things. Why don't you give us a quick synopsis of what you, what, what are your responsibilities at McPherson? Because in the pre-show, we found out she doesn't actually restore cars, so she's got to do something. Not yet, at least. <laughs> my responsibilities include uh, all of the things that facilitate our student experiences and the teaching and learning that happens on campus. So I work with marketing, fundraising, I work with the academic team and recruitment and career services, really a little bit of everything. And I spend far less time on campus than our faculty does. While they're in the classroom doing what they do best, I'm out meeting people and trying to develop relationships that further what we're trying to teach at the person college. Let's say some of the stuff we know you work hard because I all I see, you know, from McPherson is it seems an announcement, announcement, you know, new scholarship, new grant, uh, new program, new building, uh, new donated potential Pebble Beach entry. So you obviously are filling your role very well. It's some of the how many students are in the program now? You know, when Will and I were there, I think there was. 40, 42 between the two years of classes. And of course, now you're exclusively a four-year program. When Will and I went, you had a choice between two and four. But how many do you have? And what's the waiting list look like? Because when we went, there was even a waiting list. And that was, like I said, 22 years ago. And you didn't have nearly the reputation, name, and affiliations you do. Well, it's changed quite a bit. And one of the things that has changed is that we've expanded our faculty and we've been able to accommodate right around 140 students. So we usually range, at our peak, we were at about 165, which was a lot. Um, 140 is about our, our comfort level. And so uh, every year when we get students in, we do have a wait list. We try to get those students on campus and get them started in their gen ed courses if possible, so that then they can just segue right into to the restoration program. But it's considerably larger than it was even 10 years ago. So is it, are you taking, based on a 140 number, are you taking like, is there like 35 students per class, you know, freshman, junior, senior, or is it, is it basically, you're accepting 35 new people a year, is that, I guess that's what my question is, obviously. Yeah, in general terms, we take about 30 first-time freshmen and 10 transfers. That's kind of what we look at, because we love the transfers that come in, they're, they bring a lot of experience and maturity to, to the program. And a lot of them have been, we've had military, we've had business people who've come in. And so they bring a lot of great perspective to the class. So we want to make sure that we reserve those, those spaces, but usually it's about 40 a year. And then the transfer students take about three years to graduate. The other students take about four. So there's kind of cycling in and out of that, that, that keeps us right around 140, 150. And you kind of alluded to do it a little bit there, business people, military, 
how many of your freshman class are non-traditional? When you know, when I, I went to McPherson, I enrolled as a 27-year-old, so you know, I was very non, or I was non-traditional. But if I understand right, it's not uncommon for you to potentially have student body that's in their 40s or 50s when they're you know realizing their first career choice wasn't what they want to continue doing the rest of their life. Is is that true, or am I remembering something odd? No, that's true. We do have a lot of non-traditional students, and it kind of depends on how you define that. If it's somebody who's had college experience, so they're not coming in as a, a recent high school senior, we have a large number of students. I, I couldn't put a number on it, but we also have, for example, we just had a, a student graduate in December. Sorry, I started to say young man, and he's not. <laughs> he's actually my age, a little bit older than me. He was wonderful. I mean, he came in as a freshman and or as a first-year student, and just worked really hard and, and demonstrated commitment and a work ethic that was great. He got involved in things and went out and did internships and he's looking at opening up his own shop in Colorado. Yeah, I think that's a really important part of it. And in fact, some of our faculty, most of our faculty came from our program and went out into the world and came back to teach. And, and when they were students, they were non-traditional as well. So we had um, Mike Dudley is one of them, Chris Clark, Ed Barr, Joe DeCoot. So a number of those faculty members were non-traditional students on campus too. And while we're on the subject of, you know, coming to McPherson and get, getting an education or, you know, experiencing McPherson, I'm going to, maybe it's not the point, but let's jump to you all. Do you, I'm assuming you still offer um, the in, is it intern things in January, like a one month interim. class. Yeah. In, yeah. The interim. Interim. One, yeah. One, one month class. And when we were there, it was open to pretty much anybody. You know, there was a, an admission fee and you would go and, you know, all the restoration students participated. But if you were, you know, somebody who was a hobbyist and 45 years old and you wanted to learn babbitting, you'd go there and learn babbitting. Or um, I want to say there was, I can't remember what the classes were, but you know, materials and processes and, you know, learn some basic casting and molding methods. Does that still exist? And is it still open like that? Or with the size of the student body now, is it exclusively for students? We've changed the format of that a little bit. So interterm is now only for our students and people can't come in part time and just take a class. If, if they're interested, because we just don't have the capacity for it. At, a, at 140 or 50 students, we're at capacity in the, in the labs. But what we've done now, and this started more than 10 years ago, we do these summer institute classes. And those are open to prospective students, hobbyists. We have shop teachers from around the country who come. We've had people internationally, they come to Kansas and spend a week, sometimes up to three weeks in the middle of summer. Can you imagine? That's their <laughs> vacation. <laughs> and it's like, it's like a car camp, summer car camp for, for people who love cars. And so all of our faculty teach, uh, some of them teach all three weeks, some of them just teach one or two, and they can take engine rebuilding or metal fabrication, vintage panel, paint, uh, bright works, all kinds of classes that our faculty teach for that, those one week periods. And it's really great because uh, we fill up and we have probably close to 200 people on campus over those across those three weeks and they come from all over the country they live in the dorms they eat in the cafeteria we uh go out in the evening and we drive old cars and do all kinds of fun activities watch movies together we have faculty who do specialty lectures in the evening and it is a great great experience and it's so fun because it is such a our program has become recognized nationally, but, but this is kind of like its own little club of people who love to come and spend time in Kansas in the summer. Being the only one in this in this conversation right now who hasn't had anything to do with McPherson, I feel so bad that I didn't know about that. I would actually the, the crazy thing is uh, part of my family is in Kingman, just outside of yep. Wichita. And another part of my family is up in Kansas City, so it's not like I'm not familiar with the area. I, oh, my God, I, I have to come out and see y'all. I have to come out there and, and do that. That just sounds amazing. Do, do you have any interior courses in the, in the summer program? We do, and oh, those are um, taught by uh, Michael Dudley. He is the chair of our department, and Mike, he was one of those non-traditional students that came to us. He lived in Nebraska for a while and ran his own interior shop there, and 
then when Richard Dove retired, you guys will remember Richard Dove. When he retired, uh, Mike came back to fill that position. He does a fantastic job teaching in our terminal street. All right, I'm going to go ahead. I'm 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 going to go ahead and mute y'all and go look at that right now. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. I I'm learning so much right now because I honestly I've known John for for the entire time I've lived in Alabama almost. Um, met Will through co-hosting the podcast with him. And I knew, you know, both of you guys had, had graduated from McPherson. I truly thought that McPherson was only an automotive restoration campus. I didn't yeah, realize that, Yeah, I had no idea that that there were other curriculums that you could that you could study there. And um, I guess one of the questions that I have is is do you see people getting double majors where you know they'll go into communications and also get the automotive side or or something like that is do you cross over like that because that's at 49 years old i'm like okay i could go back to school and (laughs) (laughs) we so one of the things that has changed since john and will were there is that we because it's a bachelor's degree so you go for four years we have different areas of emphasis. And so we thought this was a a change that our national advisory board made several years ago was they they asked, you know, why are we not taking advantage of the fact that this program is on a liberal arts campus? And there are all these other disciplines that that we can utilize for our students that are really critical in developing a lot of skills for them. So, So students can do the straight restoration technology major. They can do it with an area of emphasis, which would be management or design communication or history. And so we have students in all of those different tracks. Those are the things that that our students do. And you can see that in the choices that they make in terms of careers and the internships that they do. So yes, we do. And that's a really important difference in our program and what you'd find at a tech school is that our students can study management and understand finance and they can study communications, learn graphic design, do all those different things. That's, I mean, that's such an important skill set for they, a lot of folks that want to go out and be entrepreneurial. Well, they also have a football team, a basketball team, a yeah. soccer team. What? So, yeah, like when I when I came out as a freshman, I was actually kind of being recruited to play football, too. <laughs> I mean, it's not like you're just going out in the middle of nowhere and have nothing to do. I mean, you're, you're kind of out in the middle of nowhere, but there's so much stuff going on. We are, we're always going to basketball games and football games and. You know, and even if you're an athlete, now when I was there, they didn't offer athletic scholarships. I don't know if y'all do that anymore or not. Is that still the way it is? We do. Okay. That was kind of the the thing for me was I'm like, you know, I'll play football if it'll help my mom and dad's pocketbook, but I, I'm not going to go out there and just, you know, I mean, I was kind of done my senior year, to be honest with you, but if it would have helped, I would have played. A couple of people in our class, and I'm drawing a blank, a rem- bigger guy, short black hair, I remember. Doug and, Schwartz. Yeah, Doug. You know, he was on the football team. He was. What's the um, student body? You know, we've talked about 140 people in the restoration program, and now that we're, we're trying to explain that McPherson is a real college, um, I believe <laughs> you still are the only automotive program in an accredited university. There's a lot of new things popping up in a lot of junior college, colleges and that but you're the only, you know, degreed program. And what's the, you know, how many people are on campus at McPherson? It's just not 140, you know, car guys and girls. I mean, even even when Will and I were there, there were, you know, we had a couple of uh, girls in our class. And so it's open to everybody, but. We have about 800 students on campus, which is considerably bigger than when you guys were there. That's a lot bigger. Yeah. That, yeah. I say that's at least double. I, mean, I was thinking 300, 390 uh, when we were there. I can't, I'm not a hundred percent sure. It's a long time ago. And I didn't, yeah, so, I, did, I didn't live on campus when I was there. So I missed out on a lot of that fun stuff that Will's talking about. Yeah. We have 800 students and we're on target. And our goal is to, to get around 1500 in the next five years or so. And, and we're on a growth pattern. We're really excited about that because anything we can do through our restoration program to highlight the rest of the college is an advantage for us. Well, I didn't realize that you were recruited to play football while you were there, but <laughs> yep. it's really great because we see our auto restoration. The difference that I see from, I worked at the college in the late nineties, but not with the restoration program. 
the difference that I see is that I feel like this, the auto restoration students now are more integrated across campus. They've wait, been wait, hang, hang on. I hate to cut you off. There, there ain't no way you was working at the college in the late 90s because yes, you, had to, you had to still be in high school. Oh, you're a sweetheart. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> well, come on. We both know I'm older than you. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. we, <laughs> now, you've, now you've made me blush and you've made me lose track of what I was saying. <laughs> So one of the things that's happening right now is that I see that students are really integrated on campus, that they're part of student government, they're part of athletics, they're in band. In fact, our band program started up um, six or seven years ago. It restarted. I may be off on my years there. And it started with six students in an ensemble and five of them were auto restoration students. So I really love that people are starting to recognize that while you all may be car crazy, that there's a lot to loving cars, that it's, it, it's a lot more than that, that there are a lot of historical, technical, mathematical, all kinds of different skills that you need to succeed in the things that you're doing. I mean, the, the creative side of what a lot of us do. I mean, I've, I've seen John and Will's work and you, you have to have a, a massively creative brain in order to accomplish what, those guys have built over the years. And, and, you know, like you just said, man, I mean, you, you have to be able to cultivate that through other programs at, at some point in time. It can't, it can't just be sheet metal 24 seven for most people. It means there needs to be something else mixed in there. It's cool that you, you guys are providing that. Well, and we have probably 95% of our students come in and they say, Hey, I want to own a business someday. I want to own my own business. That's a beautiful dream, but as you know, it takes a lot more than just wanting it to make it happen and to yes, pay the bills and to hire people. Looking at three self-employed people. So, yes, <laughs> exactly. And so I think that's one of the real advantages of one, having the non-traditional students in there and two, having that full curriculum that's available to them in other areas, because starting a business today is a lot more complicated than it was. And there's tax laws HR, all of those things that you have to take into consideration. And so it's a pain in the butt. I'm yeah. literally learning something new every day. And, oh, and yeah. the yeah. stuff that I'm learning every day is not stuff that I really want to have to learn, but you have right. to. Exactly. You, have to know. Have, you absolutely and, have to. And you know, part of owning a business is you may have other people doing stuff for you, but you better know how to do it too. Yeah. You may not have to be as good at it as them. And I'm talking whether it's sheet metal fab, interior, paint and body, accounting, ordering mm -hmm. parts. It doesn't matter. You better know how to do everything there is to do in your business. If not, you're going to fail. The one I love is when students say, I want to own my business so I can be my own boss and I can take time <laughs> off whenever I want. And like, no, it's the exact boss. opposite of that. The yeah. guys that work for you get to take off whenever the heck they That's want right. to. That's right. Yeah, while well, you're learning the accounting and all the other things, right? right? right. They're off. Well, you know, when I after I graduated from McPherson, of course they had a they had a business program and all of that mm -hmm. while I was there, but I actually came back to Alabama and got my business degree at, at home versus, you know, staying staying at McPherson where, you know, if I was to do that now, I would just incorporate my business degree and my automotive restoration degree and would have been there for four years. So it, it's, not a, side, yeah. it's, it's not a two year program anymore at all. It's, it's strictly a four year, right? That's right. And it's something when Will and I were there and I don't mean this to sound negative. One, one of the things I pointed out and, you know, Will and I were there in the first years of the advisory board and with a, you know, a major staff change right after, you know, we left and, you know, things really got rolling. And there's times I say, boy, I really wish I could go back because of what you're able to offer now compared to even what, you know, I guess 20 years is a long time, but 20 years ago. But what's been consistent from our classes, you know, we're Will and I are class of 2000, but I'll even go to the class of 99 and 98. Prior to that, I want to say it was a very small percentage of people stayed in the automotive restoration. They got out of, you know, McPherson, whether they graduated two or four years and went on and did something else. 
and I, like I said, it's with the classes of 98, 99 and on where we go back and, you know, I, one of the, um, what do you call it? Moderators that created the McPherson College Auto Restoration Facebook group. And, you know, Luke, Luke Chanel, who was in class a little bit with, uh, Will and I, and still is a um, faculty member at McPherson. And you know, we've all stayed, re- you know, in the car industry. Now, we're not all hands-on people. Uh, Hagerty's a big involvement. McKeel was part of the original advisory board who owns Hagerty. And he, a lot of McPherson graduates are executives at Hagerty or various people are doing marketing or on the, uh, uh, you know, working for Porsche and Mercedes-Benz Classic this, the graduates, you know, they're, to me, they're staying in. There are a ton of shop people. You know, there's a graduate from our class that I'd love to talk about a project he's doing because he's doing a project on a car that everybody wrote off. And it's just begun. People are beginning to find out that it's not written off. And I really don't know how much I can talk about it, but I know so much behind the scenes on it. I really think what the program has developed to and Amanda, um, you know, we're, get, we're really talking to you about McPherson a lot. What are some of those key places? What are those key um, internships? You know, I create. Uh, I kind of say I created the intern program when I was there because nobody was doing internships. And I begged him to let me go out to Barrett-Jackson, you know, see an auction, work an auction, things like that. And Craig agreed and we came to, a you know, an agreement. But I had to write a proposal and justify that as my January project as opposed to taking another class. And that was really the first program like that or was one of the first people to do. And, you know, the following year, I believe Adam did something like that. Uh, Adam Martin's a graduate of McPherson, and I believe we'll be interviewing him next Wednesday. And he's he's been big in, in the insurance industry. And, you know, he was on about a year ago talking about the uh, $70 million uh, Porsche. Uh, if you go back to that episode we had. But where where are these people or where are the students going now? Because they're big names and serious shops that deal with serious collectors, and they're not going to be allowing people to come into their shop if the program's not respected, if you know the, the program's not able to stand behind the people. Right. I want to go back to something that you said that I think is really important. I think that we have become really intentional in – setting students on a career path from the time they first find out about the college. So on recruitment days, when students are coming to visit campus, we talk to them about internships. We talk to them about how these four years, what are the things they can do to develop so that when they graduate, they are marketable out in in the field and can get jobs. We host a career fair every year that uh, has around 16 to 20 businesses that come to campus to recruit our students. They come from all over the country. And in addition to that, there's another 20 who send in information. They don't come to campus, but they're they're heavily recruiting our students. I think internships are really key to our students getting jobs. That's very important to us. And so we still have a relationship with Barrett Jackson. In fact, Craig, just two years ago, established his third endowed scholarship at the college in honor of his mom. And he was on campus and, and spoke on campus. So Barrett Jackson continues to be a partner. We have several graduates who work for RM Auctions, RM Sotheby's. We have graduates at Mecham. So the auction field is one that's really ripe for our graduates, particularly those who have not only the technical skills, but the communication skills. We have students who go and work in shops and private collections. I don't know if you follow at all Brumos Racing, but uh, the Brumos Collection just opened up in Jacksonville, Florida. And one of the guys who is the is uh, running the technical side of that, he's a graduate. He's only been out for a year. And so uh, that came about through a student experience trip that we did. So just connections. I do ha- get to have a lot of fun in my job because I get to introduce students to employers and to private collections and things like that. Um, but that's really what is most important to me is to make sure that we have those relationships so that our students can head out. Uh, once they graduate and put their degree to work. I, I was always a big believer in that real world experience. And, you know, when I came out to McPherson, the first thing I did was sought out, a, you know, a local restoration shop who was owned, owned and operated by a, what, 1982, 83 graduate of the program. Uh, 
over in Wyndham, Kansas, and I worked for him for two years. But when I did the thing uh, with Barry Jackson, I bumped into Billy Thompson, who at at the time owned White Post Restorations. Billy passed away about, I want to say, seven or eight years ago now. But I met him and talked to him, and he kind of dismissed me. He goes, I don't, you know, I don't hire anybody without two years' experience. And, of course, I went ahead and got that experience. And now, you know, it's McPherson, Kansas. There's not a lot of restoration shops in town. There's a few. And I know some graduates have hung around and stayed in McPherson and I believe have shops there. But, you know, there's not a lot of that real world. It's not like going to New York City and getting a broadcasting degree and there's a radio station on every corner. What what you've made available for the students is, you know, wonderful and The way the advisory board has embraced the student body, and um, I was going to say, we interviewed uh, Tom Cotter, um, beginning of the month, episode 120, and he's a member of the advisory board. So it's, you know, it's amazing, and I think you're going to find out with a few more of our interviews, and if you really pay attention to the podcast in the car world, you will hear the McPherson name connected to so many places. Oh, we bring Um, it up a lot. And speaking that. speaking of interns, you know, last year was our first year to have an intern. James Watson, he came in, and I'll say this: he he came in basically a senior. He he kind of got messed up a little bit, um, had to go back and finish up. But he had been there for four years, so he'd come in with four years of experience through McPherson. The level that he came in to Big Oak at was superior way far higher above the level I was when I graduated. So that's just kind of a testament to the faculty, the staff and what they're doing with these with these young men and and, and really developing them into what they want to become, whether it's a fabricator or interior person or insurance guy or, or whatever. And actually James wanted to kind of get back closer to home. And I was able to really help him introduce him to to some shops in that area. And and actually one of them hired him and it's a a pretty high end hot rod shop that he's working at. Um, So that was pretty awesome to see somebody like that come in uh, as an intern and their level was where where it should be, honestly. I mean, that's where it should be. They should be able to come into a shop, another way around a shop. James wanted to be more on the fabrication side. I mean, he knew how to MIG weld, knew how to TIG weld, knew how to shape some panels, uh, and he could follow direction pretty well. You could you could tell him to, you know, do something that, you know, install a vintage air. He could read the directions. He could put it in. He knew. He just, he didn't ask. I mean, there's no such thing as a dumb question, but we all know there are dumb questions. <laughs> um <laughs> He wasn't asking dumb questions like "Where's the AC compressor go?" You know, crap like that. So, um, it was it was it was pretty cool to see to see that that happen. Can I get his contact number? Because the car right behind me needs a vintage air system in a bad way. It's called Big Oak Garage. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, what <laughs> that's what I figured. <laughs> that's what I figured. And and it'll be a lot cheaper air conditioning system than uh, Riley offers. It'll be a lot cheaper air conditioning system that I can buy through Mercedes. I guarantee yeah. that. Yeah. We interviewed Ry- Riley Racing recently and yes. uh, Riley Engineering, and th- they have a really nice air conditioning system. But phew, I also have cars that cost much less. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things I think about in your story about James, and I appreciate you sharing that, is I mean, we have great internships. We have great connections in the industry for that. We have a fantastic advisory board who really engages with our students when they're on campus and when they're not on campus too. But I think probably the secret ingredient for our graduates is the network of, of, of contacts they get in the industry through our alumni network. I mean, it's, I can't tell you how many times I've called a graduate and said, Hey, we need, you know, I've got this student, he's needing somebody to advise him on this. Would you mind talking to him? Or they meet at an event somewhere. And, and that's just, that's invaluable. It's, it's hard to build that on your own. And there's just kind of it's like a secret club that if you're a part of McPherson College, as soon as you greet one another, you're in. You're right. It, it is. It is that way for sure. Unfortunately, I've only been back to McPherson like twice since I've graduated. One of them was, was last year, which was awesome. I'll never forget it. 
and I met so many students and, you know, gave them my contact info. A lot of them emailed me. I can't remember the guy's name, but one of them wanted to get into, into hot rod design. And it was really, you know, that was what he really wanted to do. I think, I think he moved there from Florida. I can't remember anyway. And so I gave him, you know, I gave him a bunch of the guys that I look up to as far as hot rod designers, you know, he hadn't never, he hadn't heard of a lot of these guys. So now he's been able to research these guys and, you know, hopefully he's reached out to them and, and talked to them. And, but yeah, it's kind of weird. It's like, there's almost like a secret McPherson college restoration society or something. And um, I have a friend that refers to it as the McPherson mafia. Because we wear these events, we wear little uh, these little pins that say McPherson College, and he'll say, "Oh, I've seen a lot of your mafia friends today." <laughs> yeah. Yep. So I'll take it. It's it, it, it's kind of like the Facebook page, McPherson uh, College, uh, you know, Auto Restoration Graduates, or whatever it's called. You know, it's a secret page. You you have to know somebody to get into it anymore. And that was the idea: is a way. And and for you graduates that are listening to this that don't know it exists. You know, reach out. We'll we'll figure out how to get you in. It's a way that we can converse. And the idea behind it was, if I had a question about something or I needed a part that we could talk, and you know, a lot of memes get exchanged and whatever. But every now and then, there's a serious question. I threw one out there. Um, I had to evaluate a collection a few weeks ago, and there was a car in that collection, and. I saw some pictures of it and I wanted to be sure what that car was because I knew that was the mega dollar car and I wanted to go in and know and I'm not a mark expert on on said car but I asked the question on that that forum and got a couple of names made some phone calls and when I went and evaluated the collection I knew more about the car than the guy that owned it and you know those little things and it's I think we all stick together from McPherson. Like you said, it's it's just a little click and we're a society. And uh, if you want to figure out who we are, I think, you know, you gather at Amelia, you gather at Pebble in a big group in the afternoon one time and take a big picture. <laughs> you know, I'm feeling kind of bad for Sean right now. I'm thinking we need to get him out here to take some classes or something it so he can definitely, be in I mean, society. <laughs> I'm incredibly interested in this in the summer. I mean, I, I could come out there, visit family for a week and then come down and, and – visit you guys for a week and and my wife actually has worked in the automotive industry for her entire her, her entire life too and i mean she she's icar platinum certified and, and i she she would love you know what you guys do um i really i have a question involving before you actually get to the mcpherson college um and and this kind of stems from where i was back in high school and we had a Votech program that all of the uh, high schools in the Tidewater, Virginia area basically had availability to, or they could send students to. But unfortunately, back in the 80s, when I was in high school, the Votech program was looked at as a place to send the kids that were thought of as a problem. I wasn't, I was a C and B student. I didn't cause problems. I didn't even know about it. My guidance counselors literally never told me about it. And they had broadcasting curriculums. They had uh, automotive technology curriculums. They had all of these things that as a 16, 17, 18 year old, I would have been all over, absolutely all over. I'm just wondering from McPherson College's standpoint, like what what are you guys doing in order to get that younger generation who just flat out may not be being told by their guidance counselors, by any of their peers? Like, I didn't know about it. And maybe things have changed quite a bit since I was in high school. And maybe there's, they're doing a better job of actually spreading the, the gospel of. But you know, what do you do to get those younger, the younger generation that's just coming out of high school that may have that passion for something vehicular to know that you're there. I, Cause if I'd have known you were there, I'd have probably been there. I think that continues to be one of our struggles, to be honest. I mean, right. we, the events that we've chosen to take students to, as we look for them, a career path, for example, like Amelia Island, which is one of our, our favorite events to go to with students. It's not a recruiting trip. It's a trip for the students who are already in the college. Right. And so trying to figure out how we tap into the market of high school tech 
programs is a little bit of a challenge because we could go to in fact, we have done this in the past. We spent, uh, I had two, two people spend a week visiting high schools that had tech programs in the, in the Northeast, went out and visited with the students. And a lot of them were not, were not interested in going on to college and particularly going to college where they're going to have to take English. Like an actual, they're have to, like an yeah, actual and they're going to have to take automotive yeah, they, tech program. A certificate program, which right. for a lot of students, that's great. And we need right. people doing that. Right. Um, but the difference is that you know, they're going to come to our school and they're going to have to take a science class. And they're going to have to take a math class and they're, they're going to have to take all of those things. And so out of 100 students, there might be two or three that are really interested in a program like we are offering right now. And so how do you how do you allocate resources to getting people out to meet these students? So obviously, social media becomes a huge part of that and how we create content. And so we're, we're trying to figure that out and how we can get in front of those students and do cool enough things where where they're following us and they're seeing what we're doing so we'll see we'll see how that goes um but, but that is a challenge for us because we still hear from a lot of young people i didn't even know a school like this existed yeah i i, so. I th- that was my reason for asking is because i truly i didn't when i was that age i and i Again, going back to what I said earlier, I literally thought that McPherson was automotive only. I, I, I didn't realize yeah. that it was a, a full curriculum college. And I will say this, you know, I, the social media aspect of, of what you're talking about, I'm pretty sure you're talking to three people right now who would be more than happy to help you with that. Right. Um, you know, I, as far as helping to spread the word, I, I was involved in some of the Formula SAE programs that are in the state of Alabama as a consultant and a, and a driver development coach for a little while. And, and um, I just I'm really passionate about trying to find the younger minds that want to continue going down the road that we've been fortunate enough to go down. You know, we, we have I'm terrible with social media, by the way. Yeah, but you, know, you. Yeah, we've noticed. I can, I can come. To, I can come to your shop though, and we can create some social media that will help McPherson out. So how's, how's that? I, I'll, okay. I'll help you and them at the same time, and us at the same time. I discovered McPherson uh, would have been in '95 or it had to be '95, early '96. Jay Leno had endorsed his first scholarship for McPherson. And it was mentioned in our local Peoria, Illinois newspaper on the back page of probably, you know, the C-section or something. And, you know, my dad showed it to me. And, you know, I, like I said, I took nine years to decide what I wanted to be when I grew up and, and such. And, you know, went, but finally went back to college at 25 and was enrolled in a modern automotive technology program at a, a community college. So it was still not quite a vote problem. Uh, class thing, but it really was. And, you know, boy, this is what I want to do. Talk to the college. Um, I can't remember if I went out and visited first, but, you know, applied and I was accepted either as the final student in the class of 1999 or the final for the final spot of that, or the first student accepted for the class of 2000. And I chose to wrap up my first degree and then go on to McPherson. And that's how I ended up class of 2000. But, you know, and that's kind of it. It was just somebody happened to look at the newspaper the right day for me to find it in the 90s. And it it was the celebrity endorsement that made me learn of the program. And fortunately, you have a lot of, you know, those people speaking. And um, I was, I said before the show, I was on a two-hour marketing call this afternoon. And part of that was discussing marketing different things. And, you know, this is a ad exec, you know, just outside of New York City. So, you know, white collar all the way. He He's into, I know him through Lotus 7s and things. So he's a car guy. But, you know, he kind of said, you know, you know, McPherson College and these, you know, that a couple things that maybe you guys could do for marketing and getting the word out. I call it the micro movement. You're doing it in a very good way that it's, you're offering a lot more, uh, you know, with the, the better degrees. And like I said, almost everybody goes on to something from McPherson and is successful anymore. What what you, what that little place in Kansas can do for people, like you said, we bond together, we're good people. Pretty special. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it just works. And Will and I've 
been very successful. I, you know, a lot of people know my past and, you know, top of the line restoration shops, restorations for, you know, Concours event, you know, Wills competed for the Riddler award and, you know, America's most beautiful roadster before he's had cars sell on Barrett Jackson. And it's just, that's just two, two graduates, that, you know, and how I ended up in Alabama with Will, I, I never dreamed it when I was at McPherson. I can never say enough about the college, and I'm I'm always promoting it and pushing it. And then again, that's why we had you on this podcast. Is hopefully some of our listeners, and you know, right now, amazing and podcast listenership is down through these couple of weeks. Our podcast listenership is been way up. I don't know why, can't explain it, but I hope uh, you can ride a little bit of the wave and a couple more people whether it be student applicants or um, even educators learn about the program and you know are able to discuss it or reach out to you and find out more. Just- I'll give you I'll give you my quick story on on how I discovered McPherson. I was actually I was a senior in high school. I was on a church trip with my mom and my dad and my sister were at home and as soon as I walked in the door, I, I knew I wanted to do something in the automotive field, just, I mean, I grew up around hot rods my whole life and it's something I wanted to do, but my dad was, you know, trying to kind of talk me out of it. He's like, you know, that ain't, that's not what you really want to do. You know, you need to get a college education. You got to go to college, blah, 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 this, blah, 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 that. And I'm like, all right, whatever, you know, I'll go to Auburn and, you know, be an ag teacher or something like that. Well, I walk in the door and dad goes hey you need to look this up it's a place called mcpherson college you can actually get a degree in automotive restoration and i'm like yeah whatever you're lying so i looked it up sure enough they had seen it on my classic car with dennis gage so looked it up and i'm like that's where i'm going and mom and dad were like okay you you said you they told me i had to go to college so I said, that's where I'm going. Schedule I love visit. it. <laughs> yep. And Schedule. you know, it's, so you came and visited before you, did you come see the campus first? Yep. Yep. We yeah. came and visited, filled out my application, did all that stuff. And I didn't get accepted. And I'm like, oh man, this sucks. You know, I was next in line. Somebody dropped out and I got accepted Great. and was able to go. So I graduated college I graduated high school, little town of Hoax Bluff, Alabama. Of course, I'd been several places with with my mom and dad, mainly in the southeast, but never toward the Midwest. Graduate high school, and the next thing you know, I'm living in McPherson, Kansas, 18 years old. There's probably some uh, stories uh, that get shared still (laughs) at McPherson that uh, hopefully my name's not brought up, but they were probably about me. Those are the ones that stay in the secret club, I think. (laughs) I hope so. (laughs) But, you know, I think about, you know, there are so many schools that you can go to, associate degree programs or tech schools you can go to, and you can learn to work on modern cars. And there is not a thing wrong with that. There's not a thing wrong with modern cars that I tend to call plug and place. But you come to McPherson, you can work work on cars starting from the beginning of cars. And you learn, uh, you learn everything from all of the history of them, the, the mechanical history, the design history, how to work on these cars, why they were built the way they were. And, and even though we kind of cut off about 1970, we have students who go in to do all kinds of things. So students who get a restoration degree, they, they can go do anything that they want. So, Will, like, like I think about you, I mean, you're not restoring cars, but you're using the skills that you learned to create works of art. Right. And absolutely. And so I think that's a a message, too, when we think about how do we speak to high school students whose an old car for them is something I drove in high school. Right. And so part of what I think we do really well is when we get students there, they gain an appreciation for a much broader range of car than they maybe even knew existed before they came to campus. And that's really important. And you can take the restoration side and flip it to the hot rod side pretty easy. Yep. And I mean, you're doing the same thing. You're just making the panel look the way you want it to look. 
versus the way Henry Ford wanted it to look or right. whoever. It's pretty much all the same stuff. It's just how do you want your car to look? Do you want custom suspension or do you want to put it back original? It's a little more difficult to build a hot rod than it is to put a car back original. Speaking of that, I got a curriculum question if you want to answer it. <laughs> I, think you know, okay. I think you know where I'm going here. Is there any chance to maybe incorporate some customization in the program in the future? And I'm not talking a car like the Dart or that Gold 32, you know, just uh, an LS swap or uh, a vintage air install or custom gauges. And the reason for that question is for the hot rod guys like myself and a lot of the students that are there, when, when you enter a hot rod shop as somebody that's green, just out of college, whatever, that's a lot of the stuff you're going to be doing. You're going to be installing ride tech suspension on a 69 Camaro or putting vintage air in a Mustang or doing an LS swap in a, you know, a C10 truck. It's just a taste of it, but they're getting their feet wet with, you know, with doing some of the smaller things like. So I have an official answer and then I have another answer. All right. Um, great. My first one is it sounds to me like we need an alum who could take a, a month off and teach a January interterm introduction <laughs> class. I was literally going to ask if he was offering to help. I was. I know. Can you think of anything cooler than Will Posey coming back and teaching a class for the epic I, hell, I, do it in the summer will and i'll go out there with you and i'll just take the class uh, you're going to be my uh my helper no i need to learn i promise <laughs> i really need to learn i can drive the wheels off of them brother but you don't want me working on them so one of the things that we one of the things that we are in the process of doing is so the advisory board has been a critical part of the college since 1998, 1999. A few years ago, we got that group together. We did a strategic plan for the college. And our mission, our goal is to compete to win at Pebble Beach with a car restored by students. So right now, our focus is on uh, our students are restoring a 1953 Mercedes-Benz 500S. We are doing everything we can to get that thing concord quality and get it accepted to Pebble Beach. But as we're in this part of the strategic plan, we're getting ready to launch our next one. And so one of the things that we're going to be doing is kind of an environmental scan of the industry. Where is it going? What are the skills that are needed out there? And where does it make sense for a person college to fit? And one question that comes up is often that custom, custom build those skills. Right. And so I don't know where that will end up, but, but it is something that is on our list of things. I and mean, we've talked about just the whole gamut of things and figuring out where to, what's a good fit for us. Right. And so I think that's really what's important is where's the market that students want to be in that we can contribute to. And, and so that's a really valid question. We have a lot of grads who've gone into that field and a lot of students who are interested in it. When I was talking to a lot of the students there, that was one of the questions I asked them. I'm like, are you into, you know, hot rods or antiques or, you know, motorcycles? Because you offer motorcycles as well. I, we didn't even mention motorcycles. Um and just about all of them that I talked to, which I was sitting behind a bright ass gold 32 Ford with headers <laughs> hanging out the side. Um, they were into hot rods. I don't know what that percentage was. I would say 90% of the ones I talked to, that's what they were into. But like I said, I was there with a hot rod. I wasn't there mm -hmm. with a, you know, a restored Ferrari or something like that. So as far as students there, they are they are interested in, in that type of stuff. And, um, you know, you can reach out to me for anything. You heard it here. I think by <laughs> law, I think by law, Will is now obligated to help. I, I agree. I, you can reach out to Will for anything except coming and teaching the class. <laughs> uh, <this summer. laughs> oh, maybe I can help write the, uh, write the class and uh, find somebody that can help and pop in for a day or so. And, we'll figure maybe, it out. Maybe well, wants I, the board of director spot. That's what maybe I can for. bring a tall blonde with me. That let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> I bet we can work something out. We'll use that really there real quick to deviate completely off topic and say Will's got a big announcement coming up in an episode or two, and <laughs> it involves a tall blonde. <laughs> 
My wife's not and it's tall. Not his wife. My wife's <laughs> not blonde. <laughs> so I mean, that's that is awfully vague. Are we gonna are we gonna get into any details at all, or are we gonna leave it at that? We're gonna leave it at that. Okay, all right. Go. We're gonna leave it at that. Okay. I I, I don't ha- I don't live close enough to Will to hear his wife. So <laughs> <laughs> he's in the basement right now. He may end up staying there for a while. No, I'd go to the oh, shop. So. Okay. Well, it, it's it's about a quarter mile. You told way. me it's just through the woods. So it's, yep. yeah, yeah, you're fine. What haven't we asked you about McPherson that we should have asked you about McPherson? Or have we gotten so far into that that let, let's quit that and let's uh, find out what's, you know, what brought you to McPherson and what got you to the automotive restoration program? Obviously, you said you were there in the uh, late 90s. It's a, a career advancement thing, but I'm sure it wasn't, hey, you're going to run this or you're going to become vice president of automotive restoration. There's probably, a, am assuming, a... <laughs> and ask, would you want to do it? (laughs) That was uh, never in my sights when I came to McPherson College. I answered an ad in the newspaper, because back then that's where jobs were advertised, for a director of development position at the college. And it started out, the ad said, do you have an appreciation for small church-related liberal arts colleges? And they were looking for somebody to lead their fundraising efforts. And uh, I grew up, my father was a professor at a small liberal arts college. I, that's where I got both of my degrees. And so I thought, well, I'm, yeah, I should do this. And so I went and interviewed for the job and was basically told I had the education, but not the experience and that I should call them later. We connected later and they had hired, you mentioned earlier, Bob Kneckel. They had hired Bob Kneckel for the job I had applied for and they wanted me to meet him, which I thought was really weird. I met Bob. I loved him. Bob hired me. Uh, I, I did some grant writing and some fundraising for the college for about four years. And during that time was when Jay Leno found out about McPherson College. And so Bob, my boss, uh, was invited to come out to Los Angeles to an event where, where Jay was speaking. And Bob took uh, one of our students, Dave Leepelt, with him got Dave Leepeld up on stage, and and that was a huge turning point for us. Not just that Jay Leno acknowledged us, but that Bob and the student got up in front of industry leaders all over the country. I remember Bob coming back to campus and showing me the stack of business cards he had, and he said, something's going to happen with auto restoration. And so Bob got to work with the the president at that time. They started the advisory board, and just a lot of things started to uh, take root, and that was when I left the college. So at the time, I don't know if if this is your perspective or not, but my perspective was nobody on campus really understood auto restoration. I think I was in the front part of that building once in the four years I worked there. We were the outlaws. Yeah, that's right. You know, it was kind of forgotten. Um, I could get into some of that stuff. I'm going to be 100% honest. Smokey Blue gave you guys a, a, gave them a, you know, a whole bunch of money, said you have to have this program, and they were living with the program. Um, you know, they were doing well with it there, you know, that when it started in 78, you know, the, uh, Woody Ritchie, who's, you know, since passed was one of the original graduates and was into cars his entire life A v- very interesting man and promoted it. So, yeah, I mean, we, and it really took getting the advisory board and it, it took those couple of years with them to, like you said, find a direction, but uh, I was always good friends with Bob, you know, still chat with him every now and then. And, you know, he was, he understood the program and got it. He he probably was the biggest instigator to get it to where it is today. And, and I would agree with that. And so left the college knowing really in uh, 2000, I think I left the college or 1999, maybe not knowing really anything about the auto restoration program other than they worked on cars and an advisory board had been formed. That was it. And so a few years later, I was invited to be on the board of trustees for the college. And so I did that for a few years. And at that time, we went through a presidential shift and we hired Michael Schneider to be our president. So I was his boss for just a little while. And uh, he overheard me say that I was going to be going off the board looking for a job because I'd been home with kids and I was ready to go back to work. And so he called me about a month later and invited me to come back and run the advancement department for the college. Of course, I jumped at the chance to go back to McPherson College. I I love that place. It's a part of who I am. Went back to the college and there was a position that reported to me that was auto restoration promotions. The person who was in that job left 
and I hired Brian Martin, who still who still works with me now. And I said to him, I'm going to travel with you a little bit because I need to get a sense of what what this program is about and what we're doing. And the first show I went to, this was actually before I hired Brian, uh, Michael Schneider and I went to Pebble Beach. That was my first car show. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. Your very <laughs> first car show yeah. was Pebble Beach. Yep. You started I, low. You I say nothing like really, jumping in the... Set the bar really low. Well, you, you know, we, we, have something, also... <laughs> we have something in common, Amanda. What, what's that? The very first indoor car show that Big Oak Garage ever done was Detroit for the Riddler, and we got a great eight. <laughs> there you go. Hey, so go, go big or go Star home, big. right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> I mean, while you were at Pebble, did you also go to Quail Lodge in Monterey Historics, or, or did you just go to Pebble? Did you? We did not that year. <laughs> okay. We went okay. to. We went to. Uh, I don't even remember what we went to. I'd been home with kids for eight years, so like this was my first trip <laughs> in a long you time. And straight up, drank for, you went and drank from a fire hose, is what you did. You were like, "Oh my yep. god, look at this!" I did. I, I mean, it was fantastic. I had no idea that world existed. I came back from that, um, hired Brian Martin, and I said to him, we're going to blow this thing up. There is just so much potential for our students. There's so much out there that we we have not even considered or gotten into. And I remember driving with him somewhere. We were going to Oklahoma or somewhere to, to meet somebody. And I said to him, wouldn't it be cool if I could do auto restoration full time with you? And I was just really just talking out loud because I'd gotten so excited about the program and the possibilities for the students. And so a couple of years later, I was in a meeting with a, one of our fundraising consultants, and I said to him, you know, we're really missing the boat in, in terms of student opportunities and promotions for the college. There are just all these opportunities for out there that we don't even know about. We're not even connected to. And I think we need somebody to run that program. And he said, you know, I think that's a good idea. So I put together basically a job description and some goals. And I went to the president and I put it in front of him. And I said, Michael, I think we need somebody in this position. I think it should be me. And he said, I think that's a great idea. And I called called my husband and I said, what the hell did I just do? (laughs) I I don't know anything about this world. And, but you know, I believed, I believed in the possibilities that were out there and I have not looked back. I mean, it just, there's a piece of this program that really connects to me from, from my childhood. I grew up around motorcycles. My dad owned a motorcycle shop when I was a kid. So I grew up on dirt bikes and three wheelers and the back of his Honda Goldwing. And I mean, and just that smell and the sound and the freedom and, and all of those things that just really spoke to me in that program. And uh, yeah, so I've been doing this since 2012, Brian has been with me. 20, yeah, 2012. Brian's been with me since 2010. I think is when I hired him. And so we've really, I think, I think we've really been committed to resourcing our faculty, providing student opportunities, um, and, and we share that. We added a year ago. We hired Abigail Morgan. She graduated from the auto restoration program. She was a an auto restoration technology major, and then she did a communications minor. Uh, she's just fantastic, she, and and you know, we all are just headed in this, the same place, and got a great faculty. It's just really exciting. So I, I mean, I couldn't ask for a better job or a better group. In the course of an hour, like I was telling you earlier, I didn't know how much there was to McPherson on top of the automotive restoration program, and knowing what Will and John have accomplished, seeing what they've accomplished, seeing the work that they do. If I wasn't building my own company right now, I would be putting together a resume and a pitch deck, and I would I would be hand delivering that to you because what you guys are doing is incredible, absolutely incredible. I, I didn't realize the scope of it. It's just I have goosebumps just thinking about it. I mean, you've got to come to campus because it's you very come to campus. Cool. You know, obviously, I mean, I'm out there talking about the program, but you come to campus, you meet the students, and you meet our faculty. And you will fall in love with the place. It's, it's I mean, a it's, special it's, place. I'd be really scared yeah. to. I might not want to leave. I'm not kidding. I mean, if, if I wasn't doing what I was doing, what, what you guys are building is right up my alley as far as just the PR side of it and the marketing side of it and, and all of that. You know, just the getting out and, and sharing that message of, of what you guys are doing has to be very rewarding and very special for you. It's, 
It and is. the fact that you actually had the balls to create the position, <laughs> that's kudos to you. That, that, Thank you. That was that's not, not an easy thing. I- that's not a characteristic I knew I had in myself. That's but, not an easy uh, thing to pull off. It's, it's awesome. I just really, you know, I just believed in it. And you guys know when you believe in something, you you jump in. Yes, you do. Well, it's it's definitely uh, has made a huge improvement since you created your own position. <laughs> um, you know, when I came back last year, I, I was, dude, I was blown away. It, it, it wasn't like the weather was perfect the morning of the car show. It was kind of a little misty and, and kind of cold and kind of overcast. And good Lord, the, the turnout was unbelievable. And all this, the, the students have their own little parking area, you know, and dude, it was filled with anything you can think of. It, it was pretty cool. Really, really cool to see. And, and something that, our class kind of started and I didn't realize it until I, I came back was all of the, uh, what do they call it? Uh, the storage units that's on the other side, the sheds, the sheds. All right. So the sheds, <laughs> all right. Well, the class that was in the, the 99 class, there was some guys that just kept some cars over there. You know, they didn't, really work on them they just you know acquired something and stuck it over there well one of them was very up up front and was big and had a lot and power and and concrete floor a lot of them were just dirt floor back then and uh i think it was chevy jeff i was like i want that storage unit don't let it go and he was like all right so we went over there his last day there we went over there put it in my name and and me and my roommate we worked out of that thing I mean, mm-hmm. we changed transmissions, camshafts. I mean, we were working our butts off over there. And and whenever uh, James was telling me about the sheds, and he's like, "Dude, it's like a a completely big shop." And everybody, I'm like, "You got to be kidding me, man!" And it was kind of it was kind of cool hearing that story that you know we kind of kind of really started that. You know, we would hang out over there and you know, do what college students do and work on our cars and, uh, you know, get in trouble and be told to leave and, <laughs> you know, all that stuff. So, yeah, it's a, definitely a creative space. And, uh, and I love it because that's where a lot of that outside of the classroom learning happens because yep. yeah, they all have their own projects over there. Yep. And it's, uh, we had one of our advisory board members, I, I think it was uh, Dave Kenny said to me one time, what a community is over there. And it's nothing that you could create or build. It's had to happen on its own. Yep. But for people to have to leave their projects, I mean, obviously they lock their tools away, but you know, they leave their toolboxes and stuff out there and, and it's an open space that, that there is a real, a real trust among, among those uh, students who are over there. And, and it's a pretty neat thing to see. And, they take nothing more than great pride in the student car show that they put on. Usually the first weekend in May, the first Saturday of May, obviously this year uh, we had to cancel it for the first time in 20 years. They put so much work into that, getting amazing feature cars. We had 400 cars there the last couple of years. The students under the leadership of Chris Paulson, who's the faculty advisor for that. Um, everybody, there's a time to come to campus. Sean, that's next May. First Saturday in May, you have to come to campus. I'd love to go. I'd love. I mean, you know, we're all in Alabama. Let's find road something trip. cool. To, let's find something cool to road trip out there. In. Well, Will and I, were, Will and I were really gonna go. We were gonna go this year. I think we had it on our calendars, and I was really. It would be the first time I went back. I think I went in oh one and oh two. It'd be and amazing to go out there and actually since. do the podcast live but, from the campus. You know, and, and, that would be great. I've said before, is there a lot of changes happened when Will and I were there? You know, and like he said, that storage unit was uh, created. Uh, that class of '99 kind of yep. started the idea behind the car show. And I re- and I remember the faculty it ain't gonna saying, work. "Oh, we used it to do one, work. and you know, it's not going to work." All we heard. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and, and we put, yeah, we, we pushed it, and you know, they let us do it, and uh, but. <laughs> We, we got it and it launched and it's so great to hear what it grew into. And, you know, it's not just a car show. It's 
teaching, you know, the the kids or the students, you know, how to set up a car show, how to invite people, putting on an event, which, you know, I was in a museum for a while and you put on events and you've got to deal with things like that. It's networking and it's getting the cars. And I mean, it, it in itself is a learning experience and really it's a, if if I'm not mistaken is still an extracurricular activity when it comes down to it and in a for anybody who's in the car world a 400 car car show or anybody you know think of putting on a wedding with 400 people at it and really it's 800 people because every car seems to come with two people no, no matter what uh, so it's it's a big thing to put together, and this the cars that are appearing and the people that are appearing. I mean, you know, like uh, I've heard Will Posey was out there last year. But <laughs> it's so good to be on the beginning and see see the changes and know what's happened. But there's so much jealousy in me that I can't go back and do it again. There's just <laughs> there's no way I could take four years off and <laughs> and do that. Um, I think what you, you know what you've built with the college and. I think a lot of the publicity, a lot of, since you've taken over and really begun to push this, and when you're telling the dates and telling your story, you know, I remember, you know, I remember, and even when, when I was at White Post, which I was at White Post for eight or nine years from 2000 to whatever, 08, 09, and then whatever, it you didn't hear too much about McPherson. You didn't see it in the magazines and that. And then when I finally got to Barber's, it became more and more. It took me a couple of years to get barbers to learn who, who you guys were. It's it just, you know, in my watching and, you know, the peripheral is it's always bigger and bigger. And, you know, I alluded to, you know, there's the gathering photos at a lot of the big concours of the, the McPherson students. And no matter where you take it, the crowd seems to be bigger. There's more graduates. There's more people. There's more businesses. There's more logos on people's shirts. It's just a... Uh, it's it's just a great community and you know i don't know if any if any college set out to try it today and add it to their program you've got 20 years of growth and development and experience to get where you're at today and the program itself is 40 years old because you know or 42 years old i guess from when a gentleman named smoky blue funded a, a project and wanted to build model a's and became the restoration program and you know here we are today and this podcast is 100% behind McPherson and, you know, anything we can do to help you guys out, Will and I are there. You know, I'm a lot more friendly than oh, hey, my don't reputation lie to them. is, but it's... Uh, don't lie to them. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> it, again, is there anything we want to wrap up with? Because we're about an hour and teen in and we only ask for like 45, 50 minutes of your, your evening. Um, is there anything else we should touch on or should we go ahead and say... Good night, and then we will might talk to you again in the future. And like I said, we're going to have some other graduates on um, in the near future. Great. So. Well, we'll have some announcements coming out in the next month or so, and uh, love to come back and visit with you a little bit about those. But I think we've covered a lot. And like I said, Will, Will's going to have a big announcement in a couple of weeks, and somehow they all might tie together. Maybe we'll just have a big announcement show. That would be great. <laughs> Stay in touch. You've got... At least three of our, us are, are two of our emails. Uh, Sean would be happy to give you it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you've got me now. I, I'm not an alumni, but I'm I'm all in. I, I just, I'll help spread the message as much as I can. I, like I said earlier, I had no idea. And thank you for the education. Um, we'll take as many for, champions as we can get. Yeah, it's so it's great. it's incredible. We'll we'll go ahead and kind of wrap up the show again. You know, nodrivinggloves.com. Check us out on uh, Facebook. Uh, actually, some Twitter activity now. YouTube. Surprisingly, I, I don't know if this sh show will actually get converted to to video. Uh, we we had some technical issues, but we we might get we might work on that. <laughs> and then uh, we're everywhere. You can look up McPherson. It's uh, McPherson.edu. Um, you know, just Google the restoration program at McPherson. You can see a lot of what's going on there. Um, fill out an application online and um, go hang out with Amanda for four years and. Uh, see where your car life takes you. But for me, I I'm done for this evening. So good night, everybody. Adios. Bye-bye. <laughs>